show everyone. Okay, let's start sharing. Thank you very much for the very nice introduction. And really, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, inviting me to Typographics. So let's go. Last, uh, last in line uh, for the Friday uh, talks. A bit about Studio Dunbar. I don't know how many of you know it. Uh, it's a studio that was founded in 1977, same year as the Star Wars, uh, first Star Wars movie. It's good that you know that. And we're 16 nice people. I like to emphasize the word nice. And we focus on identity and uh, motion. This is who we are. Of course, Zoom has now become so much part of our world that we now eat Zoom cakes. You know, you know what it you know what it's like. Um, and we're in the Netherlands, and this is probably the flattest country in the entire world. This is a real picture, not Photoshop, true colors. Everything, uh, everything is real. Uh, and we're part of DEPT, and that is fantastic because we really, really have a really powerful uh, digital uh, um, uh, backup, and that's really, really great. So a bit of the things I like to do, I'm, uh, um, well, type radio, as um, well earlier mentioned. Uh, please listen to it. It's good for you. It's just as good as eating vegetables. So please listen to it. Um, I'm a motion cheerleader and because everything, everything about motion, I absolutely love. And, and I'm an obsessive book collector. This is at home when I try to put things in alphabetical order. I recommend you don't do this because it's a stupid idea to put your books in alphabetical order. Okay, so let's get to the point. How do we interact with brands or how do we interact with identities? And the truth is, this is my life now. Well, yesterday or a few, yeah, for the moment. I wake up in the morning and I am, you know, I'm on my phone, I'm checking everything, you know, I listen to the, you know, it's the news, it's Instagram, it's, uh, it, I'm constantly, I mean, at least in the morning, that's the first thing uh, I do. I know it doesn't sound uh, like great, but anyway, in the daytime, most of my conversations at the moment are through Zoom. So I'm looking at these uh, four dots most of the time. If uh, the screen is not on, and, and then I have these meaningful conversations with people, you know, dressed up as, uh, you know, Kermit. And in the evening, I'm back in bed with my laptop again on, uh, you know, either continuing to work or watching Netflix. I think most of you know that feeling. But what you see is that our, both our digital lives and physical lives I have really become one. And then that's something that we know. I mean, look at this conference. This is something that normally we would all be there together. But now we are, act, which is great. We have this possibility to do that it's, um, that it's all digital. And that's what you also see with brands. Most brands are just migrating in a purely digital realm. And they move from one platform to the other. And for ourselves, we're also using different, different platforms. So static is actually no longer an option. This is no, it, it is not possible that things just will be static. So motion plays a really, really important role. And I'll show you four examples where this plays a role in the identities that we create. So I'll start with the first one. And that's for, for uh, Amsterdam Sifonietta. And uh, this is a string orchestra in, uh, obviously, in Am Amsterdam. They're world-renowned, and we've been working with them for, I think, about 15 years. And uh, these are the, we create all these posters for them. And every year, another designer in the team creates uh, another series. So here you can see some of this, the, the posters we've designed in the last uh, 15 years. And also the different uh, uh, ways of approach to the posters by the, by the designers themselves. So three years ago, they came to the, we came to the point where um, Amsterdam Sinfonietta said we wanted a rebrand or a change. And that is a really 
that's a, quite a hard question because if you've designed the original identity and then you come back and you have to redesign your own identity, that becomes really, really hard. So you have to start questioning everything you already set for them. But this mark or how we had designed it was not ready for the digital world. So we had to really rethink and some of the questions or the essence of who they were, were all about quality, perfection, experiment, innovation. So that really had to come back into the work or how we designed uh, for them. And this was our beginning point. We used processing actually, where we could feed video and image to create different patterns within the typography. And we felt if we we're talking about innovation or excellence, we felt that this was the best way to capture their identity because music is also always moving and changing. And here you see there was a, we made a tool where you could adjust everything. So you could adjust the size of the type. You could even adjust what you see in the um, typography. You can adjust colors. And from there, you could um, create any image uh, possible. So here I can show you an example of that. language we wanted. For example, it could be more direct. And we could take even take these stills and create and here you see a few of the stills and create actually all their printed matter. So we went from motion back to print. And then their posters again, because we kept the tradition going. And here you see the acronym, the AS. Uh, uh, or you could even use the name of the um, musician or the name of the piece in the poster itself or the different animations that we made. So the next example is uh, motion in creating diversity. Um, this is uh, called Cumulus Park. It's an innovation park in Amsterdam. And we were asked to create the identity for this park. And in this park is really about uh, a knowledge or an exchange of uh, knowledge. There are students there, there are different, uh, there are startup businesses, and it's all about collaboration. So how do you create or how uh, do you create an identity that shows that uh, diversity? So this, what you see here, was our most simplest way to, exp to explain what diversity means. You know, like uh, in terms of exchange of ideas, it's a simple, you, you give something, you take something, it's really a dialogue between two people. So this became the basis of the identity for this innovation district. And we could use it in all sorts of ways in typography, which meant that you just by transferring particles, you could create a new uh, letter form or new words. And with a tool which we could adjust also what uh, type of particles we use, the size of the particles, and that would, you know, actually create the entire identity. And here you see it transforming from words and you see the different shapes and parts that became uh, the website and went also back to print, signage, uh, external signage, the, uh, this is in, uh, well, proposal stage because this part of the building is still being uh, built. 
and uh, a, a clock. This was a nice uh, extra at the uh, end that we thought was fun to uh, make. So then when it comes to uh, what I like to say, motion for motion's sake, uh, for demo festival, in the Netherlands, uh, we have screens, digital screens in most train stations. And we had the unique opportunity to collaborate with Exterior Media, and they're the owners of these uh, screens. And they commissioned us to actually design screensavers. That meant um, when you're not showing uh, advertising, we could take over the screens in those spaces they hadn't sold and then make a design for them. And just to show you quickly, we made this, uh, for every city, we made a screensaver. Basically, we used the name of the city, and here it's uh, Rotterdam. We designed a variable typeface, and uh, here this one is for Amsterdam. And for the, actually, for most, of the stations in the Netherlands. So see, here you see the whole uh, collection. And actually when it went live in the Netherlands. And what is um, what was exciting about this project was actually, I know, I mean, we also, we make posters and we do see them and uh, out and about and we do, uh, and our identities are, you know, all around the city. But what was really exciting was actually to see our work on the screen. And we thought, wow, this is such, it just felt such an exciting medium that we wanted to share this with other designers. We, we thought, okay, this is not, it shouldn't only be for us. This should be for, for more, uh, yeah, for more designers to also uh, show their work on these screens. So we thought, okay, why not initiate the world's largest motion festival in the entire world? You know, why not just do that? So we asked Exterion, we said, okay, why don't, can't we do this uh, festival and then show the work? And can we do this festival in Amsterdam Central Station, take over all 80 screens, you know, all the four video walls, and then show motion work from every designer in the world? Well, not every, hope one day maybe every designer in the world and then show them, you know, show their work. And Exterior Media said yes, and that was also unbelievable because you think, ah, oh, you have this stu crazy, stupid idea and you don't think anybody's going to say yes. They said yes, so we were like, okay, we're going to do it. And that what was also fantastic is that there were 250,000 people going through that station that meant that instead of only admiring your fellow designers and just showing the designers work, you know, to your, uh, you know, just like in an in crowd, finally we could share this great work with a, like a huge number of people. It was really out in the pub public. So we were starting this demo festival. So before you start a festival, then you think, oh, you need to make an identity. And that's where we started and to design the demo uh, identity, the design, you know, design uh, uh, for motion identity. And most ideas, I mean, everybody says, yeah, you have to have this brilliant idea. And once you have that brilliant idea, then you have to sit down and then you make the idea. But I also believe, yeah, not everything has to come from that golden, you know, egg moment. You can also start, your ideas can come from the tools that you're working with. And um, uh, one of the designers uh, in the team, Elvin, was uh, playing around with his tool on his uh, iPhone and he discovered that you actually can, you can change the, um, for example, letter form from its core. And most of the tools we have don't have this quality. So we use that idea to bring it back to a uh, demo. So that meant that we could actually move every letter from its core and we screen grab that. And uh, we also base the idea of a grid because if you're designing for motion, your grid should always move and everything that you put on your grid is always moving. And here you see it. 
also moving, the typeface is moving, the letters are moving. Everything that you put always moves. So when you put it, and on the website with your mouse over, the letters are moving even when you open the menu. And then on your phone, when you move your phone, the phone moves. And then, uh, of course, then we needed designers to send in their work. I mean, we've had the space, you know, can you imagine you have 80 screens, 24 hours to fill in that space? You need, you, you need people. So this was the, uh, the call for submission. submissions and here is some of the results and the best thing is is just to see people um, just standing there watching the uh, screens like people just standing still no advertising looking at the beautiful uh, um, motion and last but not least Motion defining a moment. And this is for DNAD, sorry, just to go back, DNAD for Festival of Creativity. And this festival was called Imagine Everything. So what is hell for a designer? I want somebody to tell me hell, but I can't hear you from here. And I'll tell you what my hell is. My hell is having the perfect clients. When the client says you can do whatever, ever you want. You know that feeling, huh? When there's no limits. And then the other hell is, if you have this festival, and it's called Designing Imagine and Designing Everything. Can you imagine these crazy two words? So where do you start? Where do you start? So we started with SpongeBob. Imagination. Imagination. Um, Imagination. Im that wasn't the answer. We thought we create every image. We wanted to capture every single image on the internet. That wasn't the answer. Uh, creating stacks of images. So when then we needed to restart. And then we said, what is imagine? And for me, imagine is the beginning of every idea. You say, now we are imagining something is going to begin. And then what is everything? And everything for me is everything is I love you till the end of the world. You know, when you go as far, as far as possible. And that came together to this. So that, and this was a great collaboration with Dynamo where we tried to make the longest, longest ever logo in the entire world so we could get into Guinness Book of Records. We still need to file that. And to create that identity, in the end, Imagine Everything is not only about design. Imagine Everything is everything else but that. And this is how we started.
second time. that you have for conferences. And then COVID happens and everything became digital. As you see with all the typography, face filters that you can use. That's Joe our wonderful intern, Josephine, our project manager. And then the ideas of all the images came back. And of course, you can't have a, a, a good festival without having cats. Sorry. Thank you.